I'm Mark with the Antique Wireless Association Museum, call sign AE2EA. And if you're like me during the pandemic, you're housebound, and you've got projects that haven't been done for years. Here's my project. This is an RCA BTA 250M AM broadcast transmitter. It's rated at 250 watts carrier power. And in the 1950s up to the 1960s, this would have been a popular transmitter for Class C AM stations. Those would be the AM stations that broadcast at 1,000 watts or less. This transmitter originally started its life in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Later on, it moved to a station in western New York, and then after that, it was acquired by a broadcast engineer who used it for field studies. He'd actually just put this on a trailer and take it out in the field if he needed to power up some uh, towers for a test. Say he wanted to uh, do a study on rearranging a tower to change the broadcast pattern. Now, hauling this out in the field was a project in itself because this thing, when it's put back together with the covers on it, weighs 750 pounds. Today, you could do that with something the size of a suitcase. But anyway, I acquired this because I wanted to get on AM, uh, originally on 160 meters, uh, possibly 80 meters, and I wanted a good transmitter to do that. Uh, this transmitter is fairly simple in design. Although uh, originally it would be rock bound, that is, it, it required a crystal oscillator because AM broadcast stations only operate on a single frequency. So my project was to get this cleaned up, basically operational on a broadcast band frequency, uh, not transmitting on that frequency, just running into a dummy load, and then uh, retune it so they would operate on 160 meters and then test the feasibility of running it on 80 meters. Now, like I said, this radio originally was rock bound, so it'd be a single frequency radio. Uh, as a ham operator, I'm going to want to change frequencies. And so I would uh, have to replace the original uh, crystal oscillator. And this was a uh, small plug-in oven controlled crystal oscillator. Replace that with a variable frequency oscillator. Uh, the problem is that a Modern variable frequency oscillator has a fairly low level output. And the oscillator on this radio uh, is an 807 tube, a fairly high power tube to find in an oscillator. It requires a considerable amount of drive. Luckily, Haggerty Radio offers this great kit that I built that you can run a low level signal from a modern VFO into, and it will boost the voltage of that signal up so you can operate your uh, either AM broadcast transmitter like I'm doing, or you could operate an older piece of equipment like this DX100 over here. Um, and that's the state of the project right now. I've cleaned it up, I've tuned it up. It's operating on 1550, which is uh, one of its original broadcast frequencies. Um, just yesterday, I got the uh, buffer amplifier hooked up, and I've been able to power it off of uh, my VFO, which is really a uh, 1960s vintage Hewlett Packard uh, selective level meter. There's a there's a, a tracking generator output on that, and uh, fired it up yesterday. Brought it up to a full 250 watt carrier, uh, modulated 100 percent, and from here on, I'm going to go in and retune it, tune it up, and get it operating in 160 meters. So when that happens, I'll post another video showing the progress on that, and after that, I'm going to explore the feasibility of getting this to operate on 80 meters, uh, which for me is a more feasible uh, band to operate on. So stay tuned, and uh, if you have projects that have been langu languishing on your bench for years and you're getting around to doing them, um, send me a video. My uh, uh, email address is mark at antiquewireless.org, and I'll list that below. Thanks, and see you later.